All right, I have something really special to show you guys. We're here at Boot Coffee Campus in San Rafael, and I'm here with Valerian, and we're gonna go and show a tour of this uh, place because there's just so much cool stuff to, to show off. Um, but this is one of the, I would really say, uh, like a hidden gem in the in the bay. Thank um, you. Yeah, well, be, because this is the one place to go to if you are really looking to up your knowledge of coffee. Um, I also really want to stress that this is the place where, I know a lot of you guys are like home enthusiasts, enthusiasts who are, you know, getting deep in the coffee game. This is a place that you can go to really level up your understanding and appreciation of coffee. And I think this is just such an amazing place to have, at least for me, to, I can, the fact that I can drive to a place like this has been uh, quite amazing. And I wanna give a tour of this. And I really want you guys to uh, check this place out if you're ever in the area. Valerian. Who are you? Hey guys, so thank you for kind words. For uh, that was really cool. Uh, my name is Valerian Hrala. Um, you know, as you can hear from my accent, I'm originally not from the United States. I was born and raised in Slovakia. I'm a Hungarian minority there, and I moved to the United States like 10 years ago. I do coffee for almost 20 years in different capacities, and now I'm here at Boot Coffee Campus. And as you said. It's a gem, so mm -hmm. I'm so lucky to work here. So I'm like, I feel like I'm coming to a toy shop every day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, should we check it out? Yeah, let's, let's go inside. Thank you. Okay, so we're inside, and why don't you show us around? Hey, welcome at Boot Coffee Campus. So we usually start our tour here. It's our coffee plant, uh, and if you come close, you can see that it has also coffee cherries okay. and some of them getting ripe. We actually had a harvest. Oh. <laughs> I want to roast it one day and I was processing it in my hands. Mm -hmm. So I was depopping and doing everything <laughs> with my hands. This is crazy, but it's, you know, it's a great example for students. They usually don't even know it's a coffee plant. So mm -hmm. they come in, they sit down, they start the course and I'm like, hey, did you guys check out the coffee plants? And they're like, oh, it's a coffee plant. Yeah. Yep. So it's called Finca San Rafael, this farm. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> because we're in San Rafael. <laughs> <laughs> right. So come uh, meet Pride. Pride is our uh, kind of like a symbol of this uh, place. You can notice that it's artwork made of spoons. Mm. <laughs> Do you know why is it spoons? Because cupping spoons? Yes. <laughs> so Pride because it's kind of you should be proud of your mm. quality and you know it's important and those spoons represent the cupping spoons. Basically what we do, mm. you know, this thing. Yeah. Okay. So come follow me. So most of the uh, roasters will roast on one of these boys. They are Giesens. Mm -hmm. They are Holland uh, made, in Holland made coffee roasters. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool, awesome, and uh, we have a lot of fun to roast on them. And uh, this is a six kilo one. It's a tiny production roaster, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, we have also these other guy, the WPG-1. It's around 150 grams, but I can roast 350 grams on it mm -hmm. easy. And we have the orange one, which is uh, one and a half kilo approximately capacity. Mm -hmm. So we usually rotate people on these roasters mm -hmm. so they can try out different things. Yeah, so you can come here to learn how to roast coffee. And if you're already a coffee roaster, you can come here and take your game or your roasting skills to the next level. And I just think this is super cool that there are roasters here and you can just come here, sign up for classes and, and take it and, and learn. And I think that is just so rare to have where this is a education focused space for coffee. Anytime I yeah. drive with an Uber driver and I'm coming to the office, let's say I'm going from San Francisco or something, mm -hmm. I always invite them over, like, hey, can can check us out? And it's like, oh, I love coffee, what is this? Or mm -hmm. sometimes people come here, it's like, is this coffee? I said, no, this is a coffee school. And they're like, oh, there's a coffee school? Yeah. Something like that exists. So it's, it's kind of cool. As I said, you know, I'm lucky to work here. And, you know, I'm usually here, the, the roaster trainer. So mm -hmm. if you come to learn about roasting, that would be me who's going to <laughs> torture you. <laughs> no, yeah. it's fun. And, uh, you know, aside from coffee, we're also kicking off chocolate as well. Yeah, we yeah. did last time a little video about tasting, mm -hmm. and that's what we do also. we using these roasters to roast the cacao mm -hmm. and making basically explorations about mm -hmm. chocolate. Okay, really cool stuff. So let's keep going. Yeah, let's go. Uh, what should I show you? So, yeah, like we can go here a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
So as you can see, we have also other different rosters. This is a SAM roster. We have also Ikawa, of course. I mean, everyone has to have Ikawa. We need to measure the density. So we have a density meter. We also measure color. So there's a one color meter, is the other color meter. So we have a lot of fun stuff here when it comes mm -hmm. to roasting and playing with coffee roasters. Mm -hmm. We do some barista classes too, and you can see that's why we have the espresso makers. Mm -hmm. We have this big mess, which you made, Brian. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of uh, cool uh, home enthusiast coffee things here that I wanted to uh, show to Valerian because I, I think this is a really fantastic space for professional development, but it's always great to show people in the pro world what the guys at home are doing. So that's what I wanted to bring today. No, it's amazing. <laughs> for me, that was a like, I was so impressed what's happening in the home scene. When I was younger, uh, the home scene was very, very different when it comes to espresso. And you know, uh, I can see that the professional world has to catch up a little bit. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. Come to our kitchen. Tons of cafe equipment in this kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is our kitchen, and this is where we have all the brewers up there. You know, we have also X Bloom, thanks to you guys, <laughs> but uh, I'm, we are very impressed, but we're still also going to keep these here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, of course, uh, hot water um, towers. That's are very important when you cup coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about cupping, right? And uh, why the pride has spoons, and that's a cupping spoon. That's yes. what we use when we professional evaluate coffee. Mm -hmm. So this is everything set up for professional evaluation. And of course, also for one of the classes, which we have the sensory class and Q-Grader, where we teach professional coffee tasters. Mm -hmm. And for that, we have different kind of assets here yeah. and different kind of tricks we play with you and yeah. train you with. So you can really come to a place like this and up your sensory game. Uh, that's kind of personally what my goal is to, uh, you know, dive down that world of elevating my sensory game. And the fact that this place is local to me is just amazing. I can come here and I can train. And I'm eventually going to pursue, I think I'm going to pursue Q at least. You will. Yeah. Valerian is also Q grader and, and, you know, he teaches the class and he hosts everything and, uh, you know, it's going to be a wild ride, but I think it'll be worth it to, to learn. So about. just to become clear, I don't teach the QA, oh, okay. I assist yeah. the QA, but yeah. what I teach uh -huh. is actually more fun, is the sensory class, mm. especially the Coffee Association sensory class. Okay. You know, QA is very professional. That's uh -huh. where you learn, like, be a professional coffee taster. The sensory class takes it a little bit easier on you and kind of like holds your hand and show you the world how to taste mm -hmm. the coffee. I love that course because people are so often intimidated by tasting mm -hmm. wine or coffee or anything, right? They feel like, I don't taste that. Mm -hmm. And they go like, no, just hold on, you know, hold my hand and we <laughs> do different experiments and kind of, I've always liked to call it that we unlock their abilities mm -hmm. because tasting and smelling, it's all in you as a human. You yeah. have it. You just have to start to think about it. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually, you know, we have great success with that course. Many times neglected by coffee professionals. Mm -hmm. So I always say, hey guys, you need the sensory course because how can you evaluate your coffee? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can become a best roaster if you don't know how to evaluate it. Good mm -hmm. luck, right? And then uh, just because a local plug, I always want to plug the ground control. Really awesome guys there. Um, hello, Ellie and Josh, if you're watching. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay, well, now let's kind of go and show off something cool. So let's, let's go to this room. This is our, I call it the torture room for a few <laughs> years. Because, <laughs> come, I'll show you what's happening. You can, uh... So we have this uh, red light, and it's not because we want to be romantical here, <laughs> but it's more about uh, not seeing the color of the, of the coffees mm -hmm. you see. We use it during triangulation, for example, or mm -hmm. roast ID exams. When we don't want you to see the color of the, of the beverage, and you really have to work only with your nose, your mm -hmm. tongue, right? So, yeah, that's what we use here. And of course, we use this room also for cuppings, regular mm -hmm. cuppings, so, yeah. A few months ago, I was here and I did a fun little triangulation exercise, and it, it's actually a lot harder than you would expect, um, because as a coffee brewer at home, you're, you're so used to just looking at things like, oh yeah, that looks like it could be a certain type of a beverage or, or a brew, like, you know, even what types of coffees it could be, depending on how you extract it and whatnot. But if you can't see the actual color of the liquid and, you know, see how dark or light it is, it's actually quite hard and you need to use 
your other senses to evaluate. That's a good point, and you know, you nailed it. I remember you did very well, and that's why I said you are ready for Q, uh, Q grading. Uh, but here's the funny thing: like uh, usually we calibrate people before the ROST ID. ROST ID is a similar exam; it's done mm -hmm. with triangulation, where you have to find the different ROS degrees. You basically have to find the odd one. Mm. And when we calibrate people, when they taste it, like first, they go like, oh, I see the difference. It's so easy. Yeah. They come here and they fail the exam. <laughs> it's not an easy exam, but you know, the, the, and that's, that's when it comes to that color. Like you don't even focus on that, but your brain processes multiple mm. sensory inputs. And that's why it may be easy for you when you do it, you know, without the red light, mm. you come here, that eye is out of game. Yeah, and it's, it's um, kind of fascinating to see how reliant we are on vision mm -hmm. when it's actually something we're tasting and smelling. And it's just kind of, a lot of my perspective of coffee has really changed when, when I started to come here and just try some of those exercises because it's just like, you didn't even think that that mm -hmm. was a thing and you're like, oh wow, wait, actually I do rely on my eyes when I'm <laughs> trying to drink coffee, which is, Mind-blowing. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And if, if you come to the sensory class, I have a lot of exercises, a lot of examples from the world when you can improve coffee by serving it differently. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Let's go to a special room where we have to be quiet because our coffee sleeps. <laughs> so, as we walk to our secret room, you can see this is all what happened at Boot Coffee in a long time. Obviously, Willem, Marcus, my predecessor. Uh, do you know this guy? I don't. He's Andy from Linea Cafe. Oh, local. Lin yeah, Linea, Linea Cafe. Okay. And you have a lot of people here. Uh, Graciano Cruz, mm -hmm. um, Panamanian farmer, very well known. And you probably will find some That's other people here. That's Mokhtar. Mokhtar, yeah. yeah. You can see the praying here. Uh, it was, I think it was in his old lab, William Sold So we have a lot of memories. That's me. <laughs> long, long time ago with Deborah from Equator Coffee filming the barista course we ah. had there. On the side, you have the Adam uh, Overton from uh, Gesha Village Estate, mm -hmm. uh, William's wife, uh, Catherine. So yeah, a lot of memories. That's when they won the best of uh, the Good Food Award for the Finca, mm. uh, Sofia. But yeah, I know you want to see this room. <laughs> yeah, this is a very special room. <laughs> <laughs> So I usually joke with my students, I said, you have to be quiet here because these coffees are super, super expensive <laughs> and they want to sleep. Well, the thing is that this kind of, you can feel that this is cooler than anything else mm -hmm. here. We keep this, keep this room very cool. Mm -hmm. Most of the coffees are packaged in vacuum. Mm -hmm. And we have different coffees here. We have some coffees which we use for, you know, Q grading or cupping, or we got samples from our customers because mm -hmm. that's what we do too. We evaluate coffees for different people. But there's also our coffees. Yes. Willem Boot has multiple farms, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see that this is our Finca La Cabra mm -hmm. and that Finca La Mula, and that's it. Yeah. So it's not like you can buy sacks and sacks <laughs> of it, that's it. I'll link everything here so you guys can check it out. But look, these are high quality Panamanian geshas. They're pricey, but they are like some of the best coffees I've ever had. And that is so crazy to say because this is local. You know, most of these coffees are actually sold uh, as green. You know, yeah. they go usually to Asia, like all mm -hmm. the good coffees, you yeah. know. And we literally have, I personally roast each of these because mm -hmm. it's not our main thing, right? We are a coffee training center. Yeah. It's just kind of like extra thing what we do. Uh, our students love this service, so that's why we decided and we have the website here. Yeah, but, you know, it's not, I don't never expect that this is going to be the next blue bottle, right? Yeah. So we'd never go for that. And we have the La Mulas, right? That's the uh, one farm, which is your favorite. Mm -hmm. We also have La Cabra, and I just gave you some fresh La Cabra, because mm -hmm. La Cabra, we didn't have any La Cabra for a while. Yeah. Just came in, so I'm curious what, you're going to th what mm -hmm. you think of that. And this La Mula, which is here, you know, that's actually 2021, I think, harvest. 2021, mm -hmm. 2022 harvest. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Our new harvest is already sold out. Mm. So if this goes away, I don't have La Mula. I don't know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> so it's like I'm already like trembling. It's like, hey, Willem, I need some La Mula. He said, dude, it's gone. I'm like, no. One thing that is very nice about Boot is the fact that they do host cuppings. Like you can just straight up, you know, sign up on the website, yeah. go to an event, and you have an opportunity to taste some of the best coffees in the world. And or the worst. Or, or the worst, yeah. Because, because sometimes, sometimes you I do, trick you. Yeah, yeah, sometimes he does that. So, you know, we love the word Gesha, but like sometimes we just want to show like, hey, there are different 
qualities of coffee out there. I'm so happy that you plugged our cupping sessions. Mm -hmm. I usually put them on our website. Mm -hmm. And now, just now, we had the Yemeni cupping, so there's nothing on, but I'm going to put the, the schedule up soon. But when I did a geisha cupping, I, that's what I did with people, because they came and they were hoping, like, I'm going to taste the best coffees in the world, <laughs> which they did. But yeah. I had bad geishas too, because geisha is just a variety. Mm -hmm. So if the farmer doesn't do a good job processing it, or you know doesn't take care of it, you can get awful geishas. Mm -hmm. So people are really surprised. It's like, oh, this is awful. Is this geisha? I said, yes. If you do go to any of those cupping sessions, they're a fantastic way to just learn. Yeah. Um, every single time I cup with Valerian, I just feel like I've learned something. And as for me, you know, that's really just helped me elevate my passion for coffee is like when you are able to actually, um, I would say, use your bank of knowledge and apply that to what you've tasted. That has been one of the most satisfying feelings I've ever had, which is like, I think I got it right or I think this is what I taste. And when you see multiple people who are now like calibrated to you, that's just so fun. It's so rewarding. Like there's like for me as an enthusiast, I'm like, yes, I got it right. I think I'm doing something. I'm on the right path. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's likewise, you know, it's it's not one way street. I, I learned myself. So when I do this cupping, I started them selfishly. I wanted to get calibrated to other people mm -hmm. and it just blew up. And I'm so happy to kind of have other coffee professionals from that kind of blue bottle or mm -hmm sometimes beets, yeah. they come here and they taste with us and we, I just learn from them, so it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But do you want to see something else cool? Yeah. You want to see our freezer? Yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> so one thing what we do here, we get a lot of high specialty lots, like Jamaica Blue Mountain, something like there, or, you know, all these kind of crazy coffees. <laughs> yeah. But recently, you know, the, I think the last year, Best of Panama, uh, Wilfred Lamastus got his mm -hmm. top prize for his uh, coffee. And we have all those coffees from that <laughs> uh, from that auction here in this tiny, tiny little bag. So this is, I think, Finca. What is it? Uh, Finca Hartmann, also friends of mm -hmm. ours. Uh, but you can see that there's all that stuff. So we freeze it, and we hope one day we're going to use it on a similar cupping. What mm. we do, so it'd be one of the cup, uh, cupping topics. And of course, we have La Mulas and La Cabras. We kind of trying to keep them and see, compare them different mm -hmm. year to year. So yeah. yeah. So how much is that? How, how how much coffee is that? So that's a hundred grand. Okay, and, then and I would have to check at the auction how much <laughs> it went for. But I thought Williams uh, Wilfred's coffee went for I think was it like three thousand dollars per pound? Jeez. So that would be like a hundred a kilo would be like six thousand ish. Mm -hmm. So if if I found his coffee a hundred grand, it's like six hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> a little brick like this, yeah, right? I, just <laughs> I hope I do I do the math correctly, but it's. It's no joke. I mean, and I don't know mm -hmm. how much the other went. I mean, it's public level of information. You can yeah. Google it. But I'm so happy we have this set. Yeah, that is super special. And you got it before the auction. So we did oh, not okay. know what's uh -huh. going to happen with it. You just get it as a sample mm -hmm. and you can bid on these coffees. Mm -hmm. So we had two sets just appearing here. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then when the auction happened, I was like, oh my gosh, this is now worth a <laughs> gold. So we emptied the freezer and mm -hmm. we just used this. We don't freeze roasted coffee ever. Mm -hmm. We only freeze um, the, the green. green coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. All right. Now, I have to make sure that I lock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope people might be showing up to try to get into this room and get into that fridge. And then we also have Geisha Village here. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are our friends uh, from Ethiopia, the homeland of Geisha. Mm -hmm. And I love their packaging because this is green coffee, obviously. And if you buy it, I mean, we also roast it, but if you buy yeah. green coffee, it comes in these little kilo bricks packaged in this kind of like a corrugated uh, cardboard and just vacuum pack. It's just mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So how much is this guy? <laughs> Probably. I would have to check on the website. Okay. I think the green is not so bad. I think okay. it's like 80 bucks, mm -hmm. between 60 and 80 dollars per kilo. So it's just not horrible. Okay. I mean, it's fine. So, uh, but these are delicious. Yeah, I don't, the, I've, I've had a lot of Gesha Villa. I don't want to offend Willem. Lamula is great. Because you know, I'm because I'm drinking it all the time now. Mm -hmm. I, these I'm discovering only, so mm -hmm. this is I really enjoy drinking uh, Gesha Village. You guys can go to the website and you can buy both green and you can buy roasted yeah. of uh, Lamilla and Gesha Village. Yes, and I would you would say like Gesha Village is, does a lot of like fun controlled fermentation experiment. Not always stuff? does okay. some, and mm -hmm. there are some lots which are very kind of experimental. The EX six EX six yes, it's very like you can taste that ferment. It's not over the top. Mm -hmm. But it's for me, it's borderline. Yeah, you know my opinion is I'm very uh, purist. <laughs> yes, and right now all these um, uh, lamulas we have, it's n there's no funky stuff going on with yeah. those. They're very clean and pure expression mm -hmm. of geisha and Panama. 
Yeah, and, and that's one thing that I would like to stress is that these are insanely clean for naturally processed coffees. Mm -hmm. and, and it's quite amazing to uh, cup some of them and brew and pull them out as espresso and you taste them and you're like, this is actually way cleaner than I thought it would be, but it's just such a beautiful expression of what Pan Man Geshe's can taste like. And you are the roaster for that too, which is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. one thing to <laughs> know. Yeah. Roasted by Valerian and it's just some of the best coffee I've had the chance to taste. And I, I really like it. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I don't know what's going to happen with the next lots. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's no uh, La Mula for, the, for this year, mm -hmm. but uh, I know Willem invested in uh, some processing equipment and he's going to play with anaerobics and stuff like that. I really hope, for my selfish sake, he will not do something what other people do, uh, that he over ferments those coffees mm. or gets into the weird territories. I think these coffees are so beautiful as they are. If you visit, ever visit the place, you will see that that place is really reflected in a cup. It's mm. a beautiful cloud forest. Uh, you have to hike up. Okay. No joke. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and, and as you walk there, you can see these shady parts and open parts because it's a national park. You cannot mm. just choppy, choppy down trees and open it up. Because, mm. you know, the Arabica does like shade, but it needs also a lot of sun in order to produce bigger quantities. And Geisha is already a low yielder. Mm. But, you know, you have this crazy place, which is beautiful. And I'm like, why, why would you mask it with a process? Mm -hmm. you know, I can understand when there's a coffee which is not great, mm -hmm. you put process on it to kind of make it more interesting. I still find it kind of like mm, green yeah. but yeah. Well, we're, we're gonna save that topic okay. for an entire other video just to talk about processing and, and all of that. Just because like, I think these are just very interesting topics mm -hmm. to explore, but you got to take me to La Mola one day. <laughs> you know, 100%. I think that next time we will talk to Willem Booth, mm -hmm. I mean, author himself, he always travels, like he's always all over the world. And I think that could be, could be a great trip for you and for your viewers mm -hmm. to see La Mula uh, in action. And it's just, it's just a wonderful place. You will mm -hmm. enjoy it, I guarantee. Yeah. Well, I see it already when I'm tasting the coffees. I want to actually go there and, and see how it's all done. And I think that'd be so fun. Yeah, so let's actually go and brew some coffee. We can talk a little bit about it and then talk a little bit more about boot and the types of classes you can take here, cool. the type of experience you get here, and then that's the video. Perfect. Yeah. Let's check it out. So that was a tour of Boot Coffee Campus. Got to see so many cool things. Roasters, machines, coffee, red room. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff and a lot of fantastic stories from Valerian. I'd also like to spend some time to sh talk a bit about classes and what, you know, why would you even want to come here, right? Like, what are the reasons to come to a place like this? So what's your favorite course to teach here? So I have two classes uh, which I like to teach a lot. I mean, obviously all of the classes I like to teach, but my favorite is definitely the uh, sensory foundations mm -hmm. or intermediate too. It's a... Uh, Specialty Coffee Association's curriculum, but we added some add-ons to it because it's really like people come here with the expectations that I don't know how to taste. Mm. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I will never learn it, so let me try it with a sensory class. And it's just fascinating that by end of the class, they're kind of like, okay, I get it now. Obviously, you need to practice. It's not like, but we really unlock it. Mm -hmm. So that end of the day for me is so rewarding when I can see that, you know, we have actually cupping on end of the day, but because of those exercises from morning to the almost evening, um, that cupping, they come up with the right descriptors. Obviously they cannot score coffees yet because that's all about calibration, yeah. that may be for Q grader, but the fact that you, you know, in a day, you kind of start to get it, it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And my other favorite course is definitely the, uh, the we have the Roasting Lab Pro business. You know, I started two coffee companies in my life and I always find that beginning super fascinating. It's mm -hmm. when you have sparkles in your eyes and you're all excited to call for it. And there's a special energy in you, kind of like almost like a, like a charged battery. Mm -hmm. So those people who come here for that class are mm -hmm. those people. So I'm basically charging myself on their energy. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. We end the whole class with, uh, on Friday we have, we call it the guppy tank, you know, shark tank. Oh, <laughs> so it's a guppy tank, the small version, <laughs> where basically everybody presents their like vision, and other people kind of you know comment on that or give them ideas or things, and it, it's really fascinating what kind of awesome ideas are coming out, mm -hmm. and I'm so lucky to just you know be there. So that's why these two classes are for me kind of like really close, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy. Do you need to be a coffee professional at all to come to these classes? No, actually, that's a great question, by the way, because 
the sensory, we get people who never tasted coffee. Like, and they said, oh, anytime I go to a wine tasting, I'm like, I don't know anything. And it's, it's scary because the sommelier comes up with all these descriptors. I don't know how to do that. I always say that you guys start with, work with coffee. Wine tasting is just so easy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but really, like we, we do those exercises. And when it comes to business class, I actually can tell you multiple stories. When people came here for the class, they had no clue how to roast. By Monday, they were starting their coffee companies. Mm. Because on that business course, I have a liberty to teach you roast efficiently. Mm. So rather than, you know, SCA course, we teach you the theory of roasting. Obviously, we roast a lot, but it's more about, you know, how to become a roaster. And a business class is how to make money with coffee. Mm. <laughs> so, and I know both, right? right. So it's, it's really cool. And uh, so people, like I had a guy here who started already roast coffee. And he was making money. Actually, he was making like 2,000 bucks every month selling his coffee. Mm -hmm. He came to the class. And on Monday, he said, like, hey, man, you know, can you taste my coffee? He says, yeah, yeah, let's do that during the lunch break. So he brings his coffee. He opens it up. And it's, first of all, it's ground. So you don't do that to me. You don't bring the ground <laughs> coffee. But OK, let's, let's just go with that. So I put it I was like, this is super light. So um, you know, what was your development time? So how much time passed since the first mm -hmm. crack? And if you are also, you know, first crack is the beginning of the rose development time. All coffees go through first crack. Mm. And he says, what's first crack? And I'm like, so you are selling coffee for now three, four months, making money, and you don't know what first crack is? He said, no. So let us, let's, let, let's fix this. So we fixed it. And by the end of the course, he made amazing coffees. He was mm -hmm. roasting it on here. And, you know, it was a revelation to me that people can sell coffee without knowing what first crack is, but that's happening all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not rare that people just, you know, buy themselves a roaster and it's like, oh, let, let me do that. Mm -hmm. I was doing it for 10 years, mm -hmm. from 2000 to 2010 when I came here and started to learn all about coffee and profiling, mm -hmm. yeah, so. That's the kind of cool thing with Boot Coffee Campus is like, this is probably one of the very few places that are coffee education focused, uh, like this is, probably one of the very few coffee schools in the US. Like maybe there's like another, I don't even, I can't even name any I, off the I think top there are a few, uh, yeah. honestly, I don't, I didn't ever do the market research, uh -huh. um, but there are a few coffee uh, places. There's a lot of people like me called ASDs. So it's basically authorized SEA trainers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, first of all, we're in California, and you cannot beat California, right? Look at this weather, man. It's yeah. like really awesome, right? I mean, you can beat California. Another thing about maybe the weather is winds here. Uh, and it's also like the fact that we are pretty independent. We are not a part of a roastery. Mm -hmm. We are not a part of a, of a green, you know, uh, coffee warehouse or something like yeah. that. So basically, we are as independent as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have multiple roasters here. Yes, you can see Giesens, but you can see also San Francisco mm -hmm. and Ikawa and the Primo roaster. So we, we, we try to be independent. And the fact that, you know, owner is European, I'm European, so it's kind of like adds extra spice mm -hmm. yeah. from our like, European experience. So yeah, I think that we are a little bit unique on that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but it's so cool to have a place like this that is also very adaptable to skill level and approachability of just learning about coffee. I mean, you can know nothing about coffee and come here and, and just dive real deep. If you're already an enthusiast like me, you can take your skills to the next level. And if you're already a professional, you can see what is possible. It's kind of crazy to see that you're able to offer something to everyone across every skill level. And, and I think that's very unique. Yeah, yeah, we, we like that. And, you know, the, the reason is that if you have somebody coming here for introduction to coffee, which is our like beginner's course, uh, we know that they will have fun mm -hmm. and we know they'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was a tour of Boot Coffee Campus. I want to thank Valerian here for showing us the place. And I definitely want to see what you guys think about a place like this because it is so so rare to have coffee education, anything focused on coffee education. And it's so cool that you're able to come to a place and, and learn more about coffee. So I really want to thank you for giving us a tour and we'll have more videos soon together. Really like showing off this place and showing off what, showing off Valerian and showing off all the cool stuff here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, sir. Thanks. And I hope you enjoy the coffee and come and visit us. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are friendly here. <laughs> yes. Everything will be linked and you can check it all on the website. So see you guys soon. Yeah, have yeah. a good one. Thank you. Bye.